Hello and welcome back to another Immersive Geology Developer Snapshot. In this snapshot, I'll be showing you the Pelletizer and the Rotary Kilns updates. In this version, the Pelletizer has a new model, courtesy of our model developer, Peter. When using the Pelletizer, previously you would only see the disk spin. Now, however, you can see the items in the model. As you throw items in, they will slowly process and you'll gain out items. <laughs> of course, I'm still working on it. The collision box is a little slow, so I will need to put in perhaps some, some collision here to allow users an easier time when dropping items into it. The big part of this update is the rotary kiln. This is a multi-block that has been a part of immersive geology for a very long time and has been quite useful, although it was always a bit of a power hog. Well, the update here now includes a brand new graphical user interface as well as some new mechanics to go along with it. Previous versions of the rotary kiln, you would simply put your items in and you'd wait and you'd get your items out. This is, of course, still how it will work. However, there are now things you might need to consider. So, as you can see, we're powering this with three LB components here. Something to note is we do have an input gauge. This shows you how much power the rotary kiln is receiving. Something to note here is currently in this developer snapshot, the counter is off by exactly one half. I'm still determining the reasoning behind this, and when it's finished, I'll be able to publish this update. Currently, with the power that we have, we can run, in fact, MV recipes. The reason we have three power inputs now is because you can now use three of the previous tier of power to push the heat level here in this gauge to the next tier based on the power you provide. So, if you wanted to cr process crushed gypsum ore, you need medium voltage. However, you can also simply wait using either a large buffer and three LB components for the temperature to reach the medium voltage level. And once it's there, you'll start processing. Of course, as soon as the recipe is outside of this area, the process will be paused, but you will not lose your item. Waiting for the temperature to heat up can be a little tedious. This is something that we have considered. When you finish a recipe, the temperature will not go down if you can sustain it comfortably. Of course, this will take energy to keep at the level that you had it previously. This level will be whatever the last recipe was. If you can no longer supply it, you will slowly cool down until you reach zero. Now let's say we needed to run an HV recipe. HV recipes are more common. You can find an HV recipe in the tungsten compound dust. Tungsten compound dust requires a lot of energy to process. In fact, with our LV connectors here, we can't supply it at all. Even if we were to upgrade a single to an MV connector, we still wouldn't have enough power we need at least two MV connectors, and even then, that's barely enough to process one. If you need to process multiple, you would need three MV connectors, all providing their max input. With this amount of power, you are comfortably able to rise through the temperature until you get to the HV mark. Do note, every time you pass through one of these gauge marks, the passive cost for rising the heat further increases. And every time you fail to meet that cost, the temperature will drop significantly. This is to prevent, of course, buffering. I had been testing this rigorously and found, originally, you could buffer and then continuously push forth. This is designed, of course, however, Turning it on and off used to result in you slowly able to, with a lot of focus, 
climb up the temperature gauge when you really shouldn't have. This has been fixed with a hefty negative on the temperature when you have the machine off. It's also handy if you need to run a cooler recipe after you've run a high temperature recipe. Because if you're running a high temperature recipe and then you need to run a lower temperature recipe, you'll have to wait for it to cool back down. Now, if it's on, the cooling time is quite slow. Cooling down costs no power, and when you're sustaining a temperature, it costs significantly less power. The main cost of, of temperature increases is when you're going up the scale. <laughs> Don't want to go too low. Now, there is one more recipe that I can show you in this particular machine. And this is the tungsten carbide powder. The tungsten carbide powder now requires extreme voltage. Extreme voltage in IG is defined as having the rough equivalent input of three HV inputs. As you can see, we aren't able to process this recipe, not even with three full bore MV connections. We need high voltage. With one piece of high voltage, you are able to comfortably get to the HV mark. But as you go up, you'll start seeing we have a bit of a power, power bottleneck here. So we need as much power as we can in order to comfortably process tungsten carbide, which is, mind you, also a very long recipe to run. However, you can run multiple at a time, up to seven. If you want to output from this device, you will need to use an extracting conveyor belt. This will allow you to output anything in these slots out of the machine automatically. If you don't have one of these, it will stay in the machine until you either remove it through the menu or find another mod able to extract items from this particular area. And we finished. The recipe successfully ran, and we got our items. Tungsten carbide. That's all in this particular Immersive Geology Developer Snapshot. I hope you have a good day, wherever and whenever you are.